everything about a 3126 Caterpillar. Woo! Okay, you didn't ask for it, but we're gonna tell you anyway, everything wrong with a 3126 Caterpillar. So Caterpillar 3126, it comes after the 3116 and before the C7. It's a 7.2 liter ranging from 170 horse to 330 horse and ranging from 500 torque to about 800 foot pounds of torque. This is a 2003 model. It has the square Huey pump, not the round one. And this is the 330 horse and the 800 foot pounds of torque and is a relatively good engine with some small little issues to it. They came in school buses and also in the GM Kodiak uh, larger trucks. I think they came in the larger Fords as well. These are in more applications than just on road. They're also in Marine. Gotta be something good about the engine. There's a pile of them around and this is Caterpillar's kind of baby engine, um, but still pretty impressive numbers for what they are. All right, number one thing, Huey, that magical word, Huey. So hydraulic over electronic unit injector. What that means is Caterpillar kind of came up with this in collaboration with Ford at the time, and they both shared the technology. Same stuff in the power stroke as it is on these cats. And what it is is oil pressure firing your electronic injectors. That's good and bad, it leads to some problems, but if you know what you're looking at and prevent the problems, it's a relatively maintenance-free engine. If you don't know what you're doing and you don't take the precautions, it's gonna let you down and it's gonna be a very disappointing piece of junk engine that I don't want anything to do with. 3116s in the very beginning had a unit injector that was driven by a camshaft and then went to the Huey in the very last couple years of production, but all of the 3126s and the C7s are the Huey injection system. Now what that is, is a Huey pump that takes your engine oil pressure from your 50, 60 PSI and creates 3000 PSI, puts that on top of the injectors and then uses an electronic solenoid to fire your injection. That's why the range in the exact same engine is from 170 horse to 330. There's different classes of the engines, which means that there's different pistons and connecting rods. So you can't necessarily take 170 horsepower engine, tune it to get your 330. Um, without doing some some modifications to the actual engine itself but they're a very tunable engine to the fact that they're not locked there's no vats or anything on it and the proper programmer through your cat dealer or whatever can uh, simply increase your your horsepower uh, these were in motor homes as well and the limiting factor to the horsepower and torque is actually the transmission that's behind them now the Huey, because it's running off the engine oil, that's typically the job of a hydraulic oil, which is meant to have better heat characteristics and lubricity in it, um, not from dirty engine oil. It needs to have clean oil. So these, need, uh, these are picky for maintenance that you have to change your oil more often. That being said, oil advancement has come a long way in the last 10 years, and a lot of those issues are much better managed by current engine oils. So this is the Huey injection pump, and this is the oil line that's feeding it. Now this was, a, this was an issue because this line would deteriorate on the inside, and it would, it would send those little um, pieces of rubber through your injection pump and ultimately take out your injectors. You'd have to replace your pump and your injectors to the tune of four or $5,000. There is an update to that line, which is just a steel line that does not deteriorate. And if I was to take this engine and put it in something, first thing I would do would be to get that line with the filter in it. Anyway, let's see if this one fires up. Um, it's a little crusty, which is disappointing. This would be your line that has 3000 PSI of oil pressure. And you can see how rusty that is. So this being a school bus, it only gets run in the winter and gets parked all summer, which is terrible for salt. This one should have had a few more bass. This oil, uh, this oil line would have the 3000 PSI feeding your um, Huey system. And, and it could basically rupture any minute and throw 3000 PSI of oil pressure under your hood. Um, not great, but when you do lose oil pressure, um, then it'll stop running. So uh, it's kind of a nice safety where if your oil pump has complete failure or you have zero oil in the pan, it just won't run. Or Gary, who's going to be your bus driver, is going to crank it for an hour until he destroys the battery and the starter and still runs your bearing dry with no oil pressure. But that's besides the point. Don't hire Gary. <laughs> I got no power steering. Uh, oil pressure is at 
45, 40 at idle. Uh, yeah, other than that, it's charging. Sounds pretty good, actually. 341,000, which is 341 hard thousand kilometers because it's all stop and go. The buses barely make it past uh, 60 kilometers an hour between uh, the kids on there. And then you got kids puking and everything else in the back. So the inside's bad. The outside's bad because it's rusty. And depends on who your bus driver is as to how well they maintained or washed their, their vehicle. Okay, so because you're using engine oil to fire the injectors, if you don't use the right oil and you have dirty oil, they have really hard starts in the winter. Um, having a different grade, a better quality oil or synthetic oil that flows better in the cold will actually help with the starting. If you are using ether on the engine and um, you back off on the key while still firing on the ether, it can actually backfire and shear the key on the camshaft. And what that does is push all your valves into your pistons and you've got a complete engine job. These engines are not a sleeved engine, meaning that you cannot just pull the dry or wet sleeve out and pop a new one in. It means that the entire engine has to come out and it either has to be bored over or um, replaced with a whole new block. DT-466 International of the same era, you could basically rebuild that in your driveway and have a brand new engine with new sleeves with very little work. Uh, whereas this is more like the 5.9 Cummins where you cannot remove those sleeves. So if you're using ether, be very, very careful. Um, you have to crank it while you're using um, ether. Do not, do not spray your ether and then crank. And then if you've got dead battery or it pops back, you could do a lot of damage. 3116s, they had a mechanical pump. The engine builder said that he's had somebody install the pump wrong and try to fire it and the early detonation or whatever it was also sheared the keyway and uh, made a big mess of those valves and pistons. Uh, basically, ether's not really meant for an electronic engine and has to be used properly like anything else. Do it right and it won't, it won't do any damage. Just like every other engine <laughs> that has a cover covering the lifters, they leak. They make a big mess on this side. This one's not too bad, actually. You can see the oil kind of build up on the side. I've heard of it, never seen it myself. The lifter guides are a brass. The follower has a roller on it and it has to stay straight. You turn the lifter and it wipes out the cam. Improper diagnosis because your go-to is to blame the Huey system and the injectors. It's not running, it's not running right. Oh, you need all new injectors. Turns out it's the camshaft. You can see what the Huey system is with the proper diagnostic tool to eliminate that and then go to your cam. Um, but we've seen those failures as well. All right, so are they the best? Well, these would be comparable to, I would say an 8.3 Cummins or a DT-466. All have their pros and their cons, but I do kind of like the 330 horse and the 800 foot pounds of torque. So the 3126 is a three valve engine, meaning that it's got two intake valves and one exhaust. Uh, they don't have an exhaust brake built in from factory. You can put one into the exhaust pipe, but it doesn't actually have a Jake brake that fits on the 3126. So it doesn't have a Jake brake. Be cool if it did, but it doesn't. In the school buses, they're mated mainly to a Allison 2000, and those were four or five speeds. They had more gears because it's a planetary, it's an electronic engine. Through the valve body and whatever else, they can hold different planetaries to actually get six speeds out of them. But to keep your kids safe, they limited it to uh, a four speed or a five speed with a very high gear, like a 573 to one or something like that. If maintained properly with proper service intervals and the few updates, these can be really good, reliable engines, but it's just like that with any other engine. Inline sixes, I find are a better configuration because you get more torque. The 800 foot pounds of torque is a good example of that. But think of every off-road agricultural piece of equipment, every single transport truck, um, my truck, it's all inline sixes. So there must be something good about that compared to a V. There's a pile of them out there. Um, it's not like it was a short run. So parts are relatively um, easy to get if you have a big enough wallet because they paint it gold for a reason. Caterpillar parts are not cheap, but they are good quality parts. Um, you see the cat filters on a lot of different aftermarket filtration systems, things like that, because they do have their pluses for that for sure. I wouldn't hesitate to buy one. That hose is kind of a big deal. The issue of the Huey system failing will cost more than the entire engine buying it outright. So keep that in mind.
So you never know where you're going to find a VNR, like a GMC Top Kick with a, does it? Is there another 3126? Nice. This one's not as crusty. This already has the MD3060 Allison behind it, so that is a six speed already. So this one has the, the round cylinder for the um, Huey pump, so it's an older one. 330 horse and 800 foot pounds of torque. This pump already has the steel line going to it. So somebody's done that. This filter looks pretty new, so that's a good thing or a bad thing because it's at a scrapyard, so why is it here? So this one's got the MD3060 transmission, which is a, a beefier transmission than the 2000. Um, but they're both behind a 330 horsepower, 800 foot pound torque engine. That's because this thing will have six speeds with like a highway gear, whereas the bus is probably limited to a four speed or a five speed and it has a very high or tall gear ratio, like a 537 or 570 to one, something like that. You can get Allison transmission to unlock fifth and sixth gear, I think, but it's kind of a kind of an ordeal because they don't want to do that in the buses. So you have to talk to an engineer and they have to approve it. If you guys know how to do that, definitely comment down below. Um, there's a lot of RV guys and stuff and we're swapping transmissions or, or find a bus transmission that would work in the RV, but it's not unlocked or, or whatever. If you guys know what the, what the procedure is around that, definitely comment down below because I'm sure guys would be interested in that. Should have room for three batteries. I'll see if one will do it. It made the engine light come on, but that's it. So, I don't know. I don't think we have any more good batteries. I'm not going to mess around too long with that one. How fast do you think we got to get going then? <laughs> some stuff i'm sure i have comment down below if you've had any experiences um definitely check out adept ape as well he's a caterpillar mechanic he's got more information on the caterpillar engines more in depth but that we saw it at the scrapyard so we figured we would make the video while we're here comment down below on models that you want to see me review if i've had any experience with them then i most certainly will do that um otherwise remember if you're not filthy you're not rich here we go <laughs> it's getting worse Arm day, boys! Hey! Better be paying attention or I'll burn this bus around!